my name is Gil Robertson. I am the president of the African American Film Critics Association. And we want to congratulate you uh, for your, uh, your growing career. And uh, particularly, obviously, your success, which we hear, we're hearing a lot of awards talk about for Little <laughs> Fires Everywhere. Yeah, thank you so much. Absolutely. I'm going to throw you off to our members who are participating today, starting with Katia Woods in Philadelphia, Hi. Al McGee in um, South Florida, Carolyn Hines in Toronto, Reginald Pounder in Chicago, and Rhonda Rasha Penrise in Atlanta. So you guys take it over. <laughs> Hi, Lexi. Um, it's great to see you and speak with you. So my first question has to be, of course, it's going to be about little fires everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the thing with the, the show, it focuses a lot on relationships between mothers and their daughters and their children. And, but one thing I really wanted to ask you about was how art plays into, how art ties all of that in together as a theme. And for you as an act, as an actor, that is your art. But is there another form of art that you use to help you um, interpret your work? For instance, if you do photography, singing, painting, is there anything else that you use to help you become better at expressing yourself as an actor? Yeah, well, for Pearl, for the role of Pearl, um, I really focused on poetry and music um, to help me tap into the role because Pearl is a poet and a lot of times, you know, you see her writing down in her notebook, but when I first read it in the script and in the book, I was curious as to what she was writing about um, when you do see her having those quiet moments to herself. So what I did before we got into filming, I would write poems as Pearl about things that Pearl is going through. So I wrote poems about her relationship with Mia. I wrote poems about her relationship with Trip, her relationship with Elena, because it, I feel as though it connected me to the character just a bit more so I could really understand, dig deep and understand what she was going through, what was running through her mind, just everything that Pearl was going through in those moments where you do see her in her room, whether she's crying or just having a moment to herself, what is she doing? What is going through her mind? And I feel as though it kind of helped me get more connected towards her because a lot of times I think it's easy to judge the characters that we're playing. But as an actor, in my opinion, it's my job to never judge what my character is doing um, because it, I feel as though as soon as I start to judge, as soon as I start to look at her choices and be like, oh, well, I wish she would have done this or I wish she would have done this, then the performance becomes inauthentic to me um, because I, that's not, I'm not a writer. I'm not the writer. You know, this, these are the character, these are the choices that the writer made for Pearl. And so to properly play her authentically, I have to believe the choices that she's making. So I use poetry as an outlet for that. And then with the music side, because um, Little Fires Everywhere is set in 1997, I wanted to make sure that I had as much knowledge as to what it was like to be a teenager during that time since I was born in 2003. So I, so I went back and I listened to all the music um, from like the top 100s, the, you know, just the hottest music from that time. And then I also went back and listened to some music um, just from before 1997, music that I think, you know, she would listen to with Mia when they're on the road, you know, artists that I think Mia would have played around the household when she was younger. I listened to music that, you know, she would have listened to with Lexi Richardson or Elena Richardson, you know, things that she hears in the Richardson households or at school um, that, you know, wants her to be more connected, you know, with that popular side and, you know, the, the crowd at school. Um, so music and poetry were my two outlets when it came to um, just really digging deep into the character of Pearl. And was there either a particular poem that you would have read or written or a song that you, from that era that really connected with you personally apart from the character where you would have been like that you never heard it before you were like oh okay so this music from the 1997 was pretty banging. Yeah um, I think that there were a lot of them before I originally the way I grew up was, you know, my parents would always play just old school music. So there wasn't much that I hadn't like heard before. I was pretty familiar with all the artists and all the songs. Um, but I think one of the songs that kind of just really resonated, I knew about it, you know, prior to filming was probably 
to Zion by Lauryn Hill. That was like a bonding moment that Miss Carrie Washington and I had because we felt as though that would be like a total jam between me and Pearl. Um, I think it, you know, represents their story, where they come from, just so perfectly. Um, and just the beautiful relationship and bond that they have, at least before they arrive at Shaker Heights. So I think To Zion would probably be the song that stuck out to me most during the experience. Mm, fair. Thank you. Of course. Hello, Lexi. This is Al McGee on Your Entertainment Ticket here in Florida. Wow. I really enjoy Little Fires Everywhere. And also, I really enjoy Pearl, your character, Pearl. Now, tell me about Pearl, how that you were able to get into Pearl, even though that might not have been your own personal life experience. But with Pearl, how did you, or how were you able to communicate you know, your acting to become Pearl? Um, well, besides writing poetry, I also created Venn diagrams. Um, and so I created Venn diagrams um, for Pearl and all the other characters in the story. Even if, you know, Pearl didn't come into contact, like if it was BB or Bill, I still created, um, I still created Venn diagrams just so that I could really understand, get a deeper connection towards her and kind of why she was making the choices that she did like what drew her to like trip or what drew her to want to be Lexi's best friend even in the midst of you know all the negativity that you know the Richardsons were going through um so I created Venn diagrams for that but then the first Venn diagram that I created was the a Venn diagram between Pearl and me um so that I could just really understand her a bit more because like I said earlier it's never my job to judge my character or my character's choices and so I wanted to make sure that whether you know whatever she was going through I really had a deeper connection and a deeper meaning as to why she was making these choices and if I was in her position would I be making the same choices because I think it's so easy sometimes when we read books or when we watch movies or tv shows we see a character doing something and we're like oh you know I wish wish that character would have done this or this but then you have to really sit down and think well what would I do if I was in this situation? Maybe I would have done the same thing. Maybe I would have done something slightly different. And so I wanted to make sure that I really had a deeper connection and a deeper meaning as to why she was making these choices, um, why she was treating Mia like this, or why she was treating um, Moody like this, just all those type of things. And I also created playlists as Pearl for Pearl um, for every episode where I, whether it was, you know, she was going through heartbreak, whether it was she was going through, you know, first day of school, um, I wanted to make sure that, I don't know, like I said, I use art as a way to kind of, you know, get a deeper connection to these characters that I play, that I'm playing. And so I would listen to these playlists every day before I would walk on to set. And that, yet again, that honestly helped me, you know, grow a deeper connection to the story into the character. And I think a lot of us, a lot of the cast, we really use art, especially music, as an outlet to be able to tell the story properly. And uh, just a follow up question. When did you, at what age, uh, learn that you wanted to be an actor? And what type of training did you do to become an actor? Um, well, I'm originally from Washington, DC. Um, the first time that I ever wanted to just honestly be involved with the arts was about three years old. I originally started off as a ballet dancer. And so I used to um, be a ballet dancer. And that was like the first time I ever fell in love with anything involving the arts. And then by the time I was six years old, I was playing piano and singing. Um, and that's when my love for like musical theater really started to grow. Uh, my parents, like I said, would play like just, you know, all the greats in the households. They would introduce me to all, you know, the classic movies, all the classic actors. So growing up, I never really um, was missing that sort of um, knowledge when it came to just the history of the arts. And then I want to say by the time I was nine years old was really I was like, okay, I think I actually want to be an actor. This is this is what I want to do. And so my first role was um, I was in Lion King on the I was in the Lion King national tour, and so I played young Nala. That was my first time doing anything, um, and to me that was you know huge because it was a role where I got to not only act but I also got to sing and dance. Um, and so that was my first time like doing everything in one. When it comes to training, though, I never really. 
I went to like a summer camp when I was younger back home in DC. I would always go to like different performing arts summer camps. Um, and then, like I said, I would, you know, take ballet classes or singing classes. And once I, you know, start, once I moved to LA was when I really started to dig deep into acting classes. But even now, um, I really don't, you know, have the proper training. I kind of get my training from set, um, from, you know, being around actors like Carrie Washington and Reese Witherspoon and just learning from them and also making sure that you know with whatever opportunity I get I'm branching out and making sure that I'm asking questions and I'm being observant and um, you know some days when it came to Little Fires Everywhere I would shadow I would shadow not only um, Carrie and Reese but I would also shadow the directors and the producers and the writers and um, I also sat in on editing sessions just so that I got a clear understanding of the full process of creating a series and the full process of creating or creating a movie, you know, as not only I want to, I'm an aspiring producer as well. I have my own production company called Ultimate Dreamer Productions. And so I wanted to make sure that I was also branching out with whatever opportunity I got to make sure that I learned everything as possible. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. Oh, you're, I love, I love your dedication to craft. It's so refreshing to see. But, um, you know, piggybacking on that, what specifically did you learn from Reese and from Carrie and how has it helped you to grow and especially stand firmer as a, a young woman in this industry? I think the biggest thing that I learned from Miss Carrie and Miss Reese was how to unapologetically take up space as a young black actress in Hollywood. Um, Cause I think, you know, a lot of times it's like, oh, well, I learned, you know, how to act or I learned this or I learned that. But the deeper meaning of what they taught us was just the fact that always show up prepared, always show up, not necessarily just knowing your lines, but everybody else's lines. Always make sure that you know every detail and every aspect of the scene and never be afraid or timid to have ideas, to have questions. Don't let anybody, I'm only 16, I was 15 at the time. And so a lot of times as a young actor, um, it's very easy to get lost in the midst of um, the production, especially when you're working with A-less actors. And so they taught us that, you know, they never looked at us as though, you know, well, we were younger actors that were coming into the business um, with a bunch of A-less actors. We all were treated equally. Um, and I think that that created such a comfortable and space environment for us to be able to play with these characters for us to be able to play with these scenes. Um, and they taught us just, you know, how to unapologetically take up space and to never be afraid to use our own voices when it comes to ideas that we have or when it comes to, um, if something doesn't feel right or authentic to our character, there's a scene that doesn't feel right or a line that doesn't feel right, say it. Because if it doesn't feel authentic to us, it's not gonna feel authentic to the audience. And so that's what they taught us, you know, just never never be afraid, never be timid, never feel as though our voice isn't going to be heard because at least on that set, it was definitely heard. Hi Lexi, Kathy Woods out of Philadelphia. Um, Piggybacking a little bit of something that you said, just being a young Black actress, it seems right now we are in an intersection. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Pearl was a full character. She wasn't the friend that doesn't have anything to do. And what do you want people to, the industry to hear? Because we, we are still start for stories, especially at your age group, coming of age stories that, that aren't always centered on trauma, where you get to be the heroine, where you get to be the girl that has curiosity and, and all these other things. What would you like to see more as you progress in, in your, you know, for you to have more options in your career? Well, I think the biggest thing is, you know, especially during this time, we see a lot of Hollywood, you know, coming out and showing support of like, especially the Black Lives Matter movement. But I think my biggest thing would just be, let's also make sure that we are properly telling these stories that also support this movement. So whether that is with, you know, cop propaganda, making sure that we tell the authentic, the authentic truth of sometimes what our people do have to go through when it comes to encounters with the cops. And I think that that's what was so um, powerful when it comes to Little Fires Everywhere was the first scene that you see me and Pearl in. The first time that you see into their life is actually um, an encounter with the police. And, you know, for, 
this to be an adaptation of a book and you don't know when you first read the book, you don't know what Brace Me and Pearl are, um, that in itself says, says something. And so, you know, continuing my journey and my career, I wanna make sure that, you know, we're continuing to tell stories where black girls, you know, of all shades are, you know, the main character. You know, we do get to have these beautiful love stories that don't involve trauma. We get to be the hero. We get to be this, you know, we get to be the superheroes because in my opinion, black women are superheroes. So I want to continue to, you know, push those narratives forward um, and tell those stories. And that's actually part of why I started my own production company. Um, I named my production company Ultimate Dreamer Productions um, and an Ultimate Dreamer is an audacious visionary. And so the whole point behind Ultimate Dreamer Productions is to finance and support the voice and perspective of underrepresented diverse stories and underrepresented diverse artists. And so I know growing up, I didn't really have too much representation on TV or in the media. Um, and if it was, then it was usually the broken character or the sidekick or the best friend or, you know, just the broken down Black woman that was going through so much trauma. And so I want to continue um, to tell these stories, tell stories and tell, um, make sure that we give voice to characters like Pearl um, so that no young kid, boy, girl that looks like me ever has to grow up and see themselves, um, you know, not properly being represented in the media, not properly um, hearing their story or seeing their story not being properly represented in the media. To follow up, um, the relationship between you and Carrie's character, you know, obviously there are some things going on, but Pearl is also trying to let um, Carrie's character know that she, she wants to, she's trying to assert her right to have her 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 life, to have a life, to be present, to enjoy things, you know what I mean? And that's hard when that's your mom and somebody you love. That's like, I think the hardest thing in mother-daughter relationships, the yeah. moment when you are saying, I love you, but I don't agree with you. So how do you balance, how did you approach that? And have you had moments in your life where you're like, mom, I love you and I respect you. Mm -hmm. However, I'm choosing to do this. Yeah, um, I think all, you know, kids, especially teenagers, <laughs> go through things where they don't necessarily agree with their mom or their dad. Um, there are times where I know I've definitely have not agreed with my parents, but, you know, I still respect them and love them. And we can find like a happy medium and a healthy balance where, you know, we compromise and, um yeah, but I don't necessarily know when it came to approaching that relationship, it was very organic for Miss Carrie and I. Um, Miss Carrie is like a second mom to me now. And so just the relationship, we never really had like sat down, had actual conversations when it came to just like the push and pull between them. I think we both came into um, filming with an understanding of what care of what the both what both of them were going through. My apologies of what both characters were going through. Um, and just the fact at the end of the day, you know, I think so many people, you know, they watch Little Fires Everywhere, they read it, and um, they want to like dig deeper and kind of like analyze Pearl and be like, oh, well, Pearl is hanging out with the Richardson. So she wants to be white or Pearl is doing this. So she wants but that's not necessarily it. Pearl at the end of the day is just a young 15 year old black girl that is trying to find herself without her mother's guidance or actually without her mother's guidance because it's multiple mo mothers. And it's actually something that we touch on in the eighth episode where it's the final poem um, before the show ends where Pearl says, was I myself or one of my mothers? And I think that statement in itself is just such a powerful statement because she's not necessarily just talking about Mia, but she's talking about all the mother figures that are in her life or would have been in her life, whether that's with Paul Pauline or um, Madeline or even Elena. Elena, she she definitely considered Elena as almost a mother figure. And so it's really at the end of the day, everybody wants to make it complicated. But Pearl is just a young 15 year old girl, like the rest of the characters, that's trying to find their place in the world without anyone's guidance, you know, trying to really dig deep and find her truth. This is her first time having any sense of stability. So if of course she's going to mess up. Of course she's, you know, there are going to be times where she does get disrespectful with her mother, which I don't condone, but there's so much, there's just a simpler meaning and a simpler, um, I don't know, there's just so, there's just a simpler meaning to Pearl other than, you know, her trying to be white or trying to, you know, disrespect her mom because that's not what she's trying to do. She's just trying to fit in. And she's just trying to find herself and really, you know, find her place in the world. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you.
Hi, this is Reggie Ponder, the real critic out of Chicago. And I actually wanted to talk to you also about uh, the relationship with you and, and Carrie. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was so interesting to me to, to watch that relationship. You made me mad, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, um, but but there, as, as, a, as a male, the relationship that you guys had drew me to watch that it was that that just that relationship i i stopped to watch because from a from a black perspective to see all those emotions that you guys had being nice to each other loving to each other hating each other at one point can you really talk about that relationship because it was it was really good and and the way it came off on the screen thank you um, well, like I said, you know, Miss Carrie and I have an authentic, you know, bond and relationship. And so when it did come to preparing, we originally started off having, a, you know, a couple of conversations, but more as to how we would play the dynamic between me and Pearl. And it's such an interesting and complex dynamic as itself. Um, when Celeste Ng first wrote the book, like I said, she didn't ever specify their race. So it was very open. People thought, oh, well, me and Pearl are white. Or, oh, me and Pearl are Asian. Um, but for them to cast two Black actors to play, you know, these roles meant something so much more, you know, to us. And so we definitely had to sit down and have these conversations where, okay, this is already a, a completely complex and dynamic um, just duo. How are we now going to add the layer of just the authenticity of a single Black mother and daughter and what that looks like? Because it is very different, you know, we definitely had to add, there are some things that, you know, whether that was even just an improv where it was like, okay, I know growing up in a black household, you know, with a black mom, maybe this isn't, you know, something that I would say or I would do and Miss Carrie as, you know, a black mom would be like, yeah, no, this isn't the dynamic between me and my daughter or me and my mom. Um, and so I think it was, it was very interesting, but we never really had conversations where it came to, um, how we were specifically going to play like the push and pull. Um, but there were times, Miss Carrie is definitely a method actor. So there would be times where, you know, we would be in those argument scenes and she would be yelling whether, you know, even after they yelled cut, um, but it kept that adrenaline and energy going. I remember my first scene um, my first like emotional scene with her was the scene where it's we're coming back home from the junkyard and you know it's the cop car um, escorts Moody and I back home and I just vividly remember that day was just such an interesting day because it was my first time ever really having a scene like that with an actor that I like really has you know respected for such a long time and um, has been watching so I wasn't expecting her to kind of be method with it but the more and more we got into the swing of things, the more and more it just worked for us. You know, whether if it was off screen, off um, camera, they would already yell cut and we would still be arguing or we would still kind of like be pushing each other's buttons to make sure that when they yelled um, action again, we were on it. And most times, even throughout that, um, that in first entire scene, most of that is improv. Um, most of that is not written. And it just shows just the, the authenticity of the relationship that we had on set and the bond that we had on set, where it would be like that whole spiel where I'm just saying, you know, Elena respects her kids. This is what Elena does. All of that was completely improv. Um, none of that was written. And so I think it just goes to show also how much of a giving and kind actor Miss Carrie is because I don't necessarily know if I would have been able to do some of those scenes without her. She definitely pulled something out of me that I didn't know I had in me because Pearl is such an emotionally um, demanding role and going into the role I didn't know if I was going to be able to portray her properly um, but having her by my side acting with her I definitely was I feel as though I was able to play Pearl um, properly due to her and just her energy that she gave off and you know gave me during those scenes. Well, it, it, it surely showed on, on the screen. So thank you for that. And then I'm sure you're going to share one of those poems with us now that you're going to get the book and read us one of those poems. Yes, no? I don't actually have oh. it. I'm oh sorry. Oh my goodness, what is wrong with you? I'm Didn't you sorry. know you were going to see us today? Ah, uh, next question. Ah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, um, it's Carolyn again. Um, so my next question kind of goes off of what you were talking about with um, 
um, Pearl being an emotionally demanding character. Now, she, for me, was very frustrating. And, and the, one particular aspect was the way how a lot, there's a lot of racial microaggressions throughout the show. And that's what I considered one of the little fires that burned throughout the show was the small microaggressions. And there are moments where in real life, those microaggressions, we either have to decide to ignore them, let those little fires just simmer in the corner, or we're going to watch them explode into an explosion. And I wanted to ask you about how has that affected you in real life? Because for me as a, as a Black woman and then as a young, uh, and now as a, as a grown, grown up woman, there's microaggressions that I notice in real life, but also in the show. And I wish there were moments I was so frustrated with Pearl because I was like, Pearl, what she just said was an insult. That was not a compliment. I want you to, I wanted her to be just more assertive about that, right? And and for and for you that has has playing that character and seeing those seeing those little microaggressions on screen, has that made you more aware as a as a young black woman about microaggressions that would occur in real life? Um yes and no. Growing up in DC, um, I was born just around the time the gentrification started to really take over DC. Um, and growing up, I went to, at least from my elementary school experience, not from my middle school experience, but I was surrounded by um, mainly white and Hispanic kids. And so it was always kind of something, those microaggressions were always kind of something, um, even from like kindergarten or first grade that I was accustomed to. Um, and so growing up like Pearl, I... When it comes to Pearl and dealing with those microaggressions, sometimes I don't necessarily realize, uh, I don't think she realizes that, you know, those are insults only because of her, you know, just her, her prior experiences, whether that's with school or friends, you know, you also have to remember Pearl, they only stay, you know, in a town for just a couple of months. And sometimes Pearl doesn't necessarily make friends. And I think that's why she wants to hold on to that relationship with Lexi Richardson, um, because she's never had that before. She's never had the best friend where she can sleep over, where, you know, it's like her mom, like you're on a first name basis with her mom and like all her siblings like you and everybody like gets along, at least, you know, to her, you know, she thinks that Lexi is living this picture perfect world. And so to her, she thinks that, well, okay, well, this is what, you know, friends do. They just, they, they joke and they, you know, they go back and forth with each other. So I think that, you know, at first that's what she's thinking, but then really when we start to get into like the abortion storyline, Pearl starts to see, okay, this isn't normal. You know, this is just, I think this is starting to be blatant racism and um, there's just not the same respect on um, both sides. And so I don't necessarily think that, you know, Pearl, is oblivious because you know Pearl obviously understands microaggressions and racism because in the first scene with me and Pearl Mia says um, hands on the dashboard baby and she immediately knows what to do um, but I think that Pearl has never really had that relationship before and so she doesn't necessarily know how to go about it and I think especially during like episode three is when Pearl starts to have revelations of okay you know some of this isn't normal but I'm gonna just let it slide because this is a person that I consider to be my friend and I want to keep this friendship. Um, but especially by episode five, she realizes that this isn't normal. When it comes to my own experiences with microaggressions, I don't think that the story has really, or me playing Pearl has opened my eyes more to microaggressions because like I said, growing up, I had to deal with them all the time, whether it was comments about my hair, comments about my skin, like I just always had to deal with it. Um, and so I think that playing Pearl and bringing voice to this story and character. Something that I find so beautiful is the fact that especially young black girls that watch the show reached out to me, whether it was you know via social media or even just in person and told me, I actually felt seen and heard and represented times because you don't necessarily see microaggressions play out um, in TV shows where you know this is these are things that black kid, black and brown kids have to go through every day and we don't tell that story a lot that this is just the normal normal experience of just growing up black and so um you know while i didn't necessarily learn much about microaggressions i'm just glad that it gave story um like a voice to that story and that perspective of that dynamic of what it's like to be a young black girl growing up mm. um so just a, a small follow-up from that so there's a scene in particular where um where Pearl meets David, Lexi's boyfriend. 
-hmm. and there's this exchange there's this it's very small it's very it's a very short moment but it to me it said a lot also about pearl's experience where he made a joke and it was like she wasn't sure if it was a joke about her about about what elena had said or if I, or if she was like is it just that she didn't understand it because of her experiences as you mentioned like she and her mom had a transient um life like they moved from town to town to town so yeah. she wasn't familiar with interacting with especially like to me with black with black mm -hmm. um boys in particular it seemed and and it seemed like she wasn't sure how to handle the situation so she just gives it a look and she's like you know yeah. i'm just gonna go over this side mm -hmm. right so i wanted to ask you about that scene in particular what was your interpretation of that scene because it was it was one where like it, it's it's one where I, I wasn't sure exactly what her what her reaction was saying so i wanted to ask your what your interpretation of that was yeah well that dynamic between brian and pearl was just such a fun dynamic to play um Stevante hart who plays brian he's like a brother to me and so originally actually both of us went into that scene um with two very different um kind of depictions of what the scene actually was and so to me I saw it as okay I think Pearl wholeheartedly understands what's going on I think she wholeheartedly understands what the joke is about she doesn't want to laugh because she's going to think that Elena will be offended by it or she'll take offense and she doesn't want to mess up that relationship and Brian can get away with it because Brian has been in with the Richardsons for over a year um and so to Stavante, he saw it as like you well pearl hasn't really been through this before so she doesn't know and then so when we did ask the writers and approach the writers they actually said that she wholeheartedly understands what's happening she just doesn't want to offend the richardsons or offend elena and because you know brian is already brian has been in you know that field for quite a while now if he makes a little slick joke it's not going to affect him, but she had only been hanging out with the Richardsons for just a couple of weeks now. She's not, you know, that close to them. So she doesn't want to do anything that's going to mess up that bond between her and Elena. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Alex. Uh, hey, Alexi, Al McGee again. Well, I'm going to learn a little bit more about you. Have you been learning a lot about yourself and also a lot about many African Americans that have made sacrifices for you to be in this business, people such as Paul Robinson, Gordon Park, Cicely Tyson, Hattie McDaniels, and of course, Spike Lee. Have you been learning a lot about, about them and also about yourself? Absolutely. I mean, like I said, growing up, my mom, my, well, just my parents, they always made sure that I knew about not necessarily just the history of the arts, but also the history of Black arts. Right. Um, I was always just incredibly immersed with um, the culture and history behind our people when it came to acting and when it came to, you know, singing and all those type of things. And I think especially um, me being a part of Lion King helped me really just dig deeper into just all the greats that came before me because um, the cast, the ensemble cast was full of, you know, just South African, um, beautiful South African people. and. I didn't necessarily learn just about um, just like African Americans um, actors and, and singers, but I also got to learn about South African actors and singers, and I got to like really understand, just get a, get a deeper meaning behind their culture um, and dig deeper to you know where I came from, um, and so just that experience was so incredibly beautiful to me. I'm constantly reading books and, you know, watching um, documentaries, watching things, um, movies and, you know, TV shows that, you know, so many greats that came before me were a part of so that I just really get a deeper understanding. Um, and also just, I'm more, I think, grateful and humble as to what it means to be young and black in this industry because there were there was a time that this wasn't allowed you know I was I, I wouldn't have been if I was just born a couple of years before I wouldn't have been able to do this and so to me that means everything to know about the people the trailblazers that came before me um, to the point where now I can openly you know act and do what I love at only you know 16 and be able to wholeheartedly embrace where I come from and talk about you know my experience as a young black actress in this business so yeah young gifted and black thank Have you lexi and thank uh keep hope alive thank you so much 
Well, thank you so much for like just how detailed you've been with us. I truly appreciate it. I want to switch gears a bit and look at your future since we've been so on your present and your past. And I read that you want to play Aaliyah. I do. And so I want you to talk about that and why, because so many people your age are just so fascinated by Aaliyah. Um, well, growing up, Aaliyah was an artist that, you know, my parents made sure that I, I knew about. I, ever since I was younger, I've always been infatuated with her and just everything that she stood for. She was just so effortlessly cool. Um, and ever since I was younger, just whether that was watching her music videos or interviews, like that was something that I always respected about her. Just the fact that, you know, she was... I believe 15, you know, when she started, so around the same age as I was, and the fact that, you know, at that time, I mean, it was normalized for, you know, young um, Black singers or just um, young Black artists um, to, you know, be able to have bright careers and futures, but for her to be so young and to dominate um, just her, just to dominate that field, I don't know, ever since I was younger, like, it always just kind of, you know, taught me or showed me that, well, if she could do it at such a young age, I can do it too. Like if, you know, a young black girl that looks like me could have been, you know, in the, you know, top 100s and the 90s and, you know, just dominating and was just so, you know, well-respected even at such a young age, then, you know, maybe I can do that too. I can be respected and I could, you know, dominate um, the industry as well, just like she did. And so, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, it would be so cool to play her. I really absolutely just love everything about her story and where she comes from. And I don't think that, you know, we've necessarily um, just, I don't know, dive deeper into just that, that story. Um, and just the whole truth about um, her becoming what she was, you know, the beautiful young lady that she was. Um, so yeah, I would love to play her at some point, um, some point in time, I'm gonna pray on it and, and manifest it and, you know, hope that it comes to fruition. Just curious, what's your favorite Aaliyah song? Um, well, the first Aaliyah song that I ever heard was At Your Best, so it would probably have to be At Your Best. Oh, cool. Isley Brothers remake. Yep, absolutely. Lexi, thank you so much. I want to ask you one question. I mean, you're you're in a hit movie. I mean, this film has really garnered uh, the type of success that's a rarity. Yeah. Uh, are you feeling the pressure now that you your career is ascending to a different level? And if so, how are you managing that? Um, I haven't really felt much pressure only because the fact that I have been in the industry for almost seven years now. And so I've been I've been working hard to get to this point. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, well, you just arrived in the business, but it's been a long journey and a long process. And I think um, through those seven years of, you know, preparing and making sure that I've, I've been preparing for, for, you know, really for a long time to make sure that I was ready um, for when this time came. And so when it comes to whether that's social media or interviews or whatever I have to do, I want to make sure that I'm using my platform to be as authentic as possible. That was something that I swore to myself when I was younger, that I would never get lost in what the business is. I would never like lose myself or my morals um, for the business. And so with my platform on social media, especially, I want to make sure that I'm speaking up about things. I'm using my voice and my platform to help educate my followers or people that watch the show properly on not just, you know, it's cool that you follow me, but also let's, you know, dive deeper. I'm using my platform to speak up about everything happening in the world right now. I'm using my platform now. I'm struggled with um, mental health anxiety growing up. So now I want to start using my platform to branch out and really talk about mental health, especially in the Black community, and start to normalize it so that, you know, a young kid that looks like me, you know, scrolls across my page or watches an interview and feels inspired and knows that, you know, I'm just, I'm just a regular kid from, from Washington, D.C. that just happened to make it big and, you know, have a wonderful opportunity. And so I just want to make sure that with whatever I do, I'm authentic. I remember where I come from. um, And I just stay humble throughout the entire time. And so what about balance? I mean, you are living in a different space and premieres, red carpets, first class, this, that. It's not just going, hanging out at the mall with friends. Yeah. How are you striking that balance and staying connected with your peer group and just being a normal teenager? I talk to my friends 
oh, like every day. Um, whether it's a red carpet or it's a audition, I'm always making sure that I'm, you know, carving out some free time for myself. And the beautiful thing um, about this industry is I've also made friends within this industry. Um, like one of my best friends, um, her name is Shahadi Wright Joseph, and so she's an us. And so we go to a lot of like premieres together. We go to a lot of events together. Um, we've actually known each other. I've known her since I was 10 years old. So she's like a sister to me. Um, and so going to to these events and also like meeting you know new kids like you know Sky Jackson and Marcy Martin and just like being able to like connect it never really feels as though like we're actually at these big events we can just kind of like take a moment and be like hey like we're all kids we're at this event but we can just kind of have some fun and you know talk and, and be friends and so I think that that's cool I have my friends that you know I grew up with in um, Washington DC I have my friends that I first met when I came out here that aren't in the business but then I also have my friends that are in the business and that do understand that hustle and that lifestyle and so it's really cool when I am going to events or auditions where we can just find some time to be normal teenagers and and you know just talk and have fun and hang out be silly yep absolutely Terrific. Well, we certainly are looking forward to following you and supporting you and uplifting you as you continue to grow and blossom as an actress. Uh, so on behalf of our members, uh, thank you very much. Enjoy Juneteenth. Thank you. Happy Juneteenth. And we will uh, see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Stay blessed. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. Bye. Take care.